When we started choosing about this project, we were coming up with, with several different ideas, but we realized that actually many of them are related to uh, both postal systems, but also also uh, the aesthetics of, of packaging and and uh, mm -hmm. covering things, or 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 or, or um, uh, actually the institution of, of post, which 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 we which we somehow like very much. But uh, so basically, one of the one of the ideas or one of the inspiration points uh, was. Um, uh, was a, a story that we discovered about the, uh, one of the oldest postal systems, uh, uh, pipe systems, which is still functioning in in, in Czech Republic, uh, within two two hospitals or two hospital buildings, and we somehow became fascinated by the idea that, that there is basically this underground, uh, hidden, um, almost like it, it, it even thought it's a legal procedure mm -hmm. of sending things. It's still feels to us as, as a kind of alternative way of sending something, as a kind of inner communication between uh, just a fragment of the of some social structures, not, not something that many people could approach, but just a communication happening between maybe two people or two groups mm -hmm. of people or something. And Through this wrapping procedure, preparing things for post, as you've both um, been thinking about, the items that are in this room, and a lot of them come from a natural state, a tree, a park bench, railing, through this wrapping procedure, having the brown paper put around them, they start to take on quite a different visual form. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the archetype, perhaps, in the <coughs> landscape forms that you're bringing out, and the flattening that comes in this, in this wrapping, and taking away the realism of, mm -hmm. of what we know the object to be. So you've been really thinking about them, I think, as, in a sculptural way, in a collage way as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the, <laughs> that's the right uh, description of, of how we yeah, approach the object. That actually, not not in all of them we succeeded, or not in all of them we actually were that radical. But or maybe radical is not a good, good word here. But mm -hmm. we were really trying to abstract them as much as we could, or at least hide the the, the signs which would uh, yeah indicate what what the object is is made of, uh, how how uh, yeah what is the period when it was made and so on. And uh, we were rather interest, uh, interested in more like really abstracted shapes or forms that would then function um, um, uh, with each other in the same time individually in the space and uh, provoke all possible yeah, chains of associations. Uh, so also, I, I think we, we, um, we definitely share the, the sculptural interest in, in them. Mm -hmm. In the same time, I think we um, also, each of us maybe reflects them in, in slightly different way in the sense that, that yeah, that there is this realistic approach to some of, some of the objects, the, the, the covering and, and hiding the things. Uh, there is maybe I don't know. There is this, uh, yeah, several Czech artists who um, uh, worked in the surrealistic or post-surrealistic tradition that they, they would be hiding themselves under some blanket or something, or or wrapping themselves with, with some strings and, and or putting the, the bodies in, in into boxes or something. So it definitely also maybe has relation to that. One of the works that um, that we spoke about quite a lot in designing and making also was a piece of. Dominic's in which you kind of created archetypal forms in a space yeah. that cut the space which which created a situation in which a viewer could never see yeah. an entire cube an entire sphere yeah. an entire block and it's a little bit similar to how you've thought about the recreation of a landscape in sculptural yeah. material as well it's all yeah. it's also very fragmented yeah. you can't take the whole scene in at once it's it's just a part of something and that, for me, anyway, the aesthetic quality of some of the sculptures has a, really, a real similarity to those uh, mm -hmm. really large, large sculptural interventions that you've made in the past. Yeah, you say also things which I only <laughs> agree uh, with you. It's, um, it's up to the situation. Sometimes uh, artists make trap on the audience, uh, very huge and uh, uh, in, uh, very big, but at the same time you can um, makes uh, easier uh, things to the open mind of, of the people around you yeah. by fragmenting or something or, or transforming. Mm -hmm. but you it's the, lib it's the great liberation of <laughs> yeah. abstraction. And in the, uh, in the making of the piece, like, things came together as you, as you settled on this particular park that started giving you quite a lot of material. Mm -hmm. And at a certain uh, phase in the process, uh, dialogue entered, a dialogue for the public, a narrative, mm -hmm. which feels to me like what, what I'm calling an absurd realism, 
And it's in this dialogue that appears to be going on between an institution that housed the park, mm -hmm. had the park, and a, a body that responded to an advertisement in the newspaper offering the park to anyone who could transport it, mm -hmm. move it. And the way, uh, Ava, that you've written this text, it's very, um, well, it's, it's like shockingly institutional for me, <laughs> someone who works in an institution. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> And I, as I understand it, this is a result of quite a lot of research you've been doing into institutional rules and conditions, and therefore language. It is. I, I would say it's it's uh, the case of both of us, but we both. Uh, because we everyone have studying. experience with the institution. It's, yes. It can be park, can be a gallery, but also can be school or hospital, and yeah. any, anything. But when you start thinking about it, it's it's more and more visible the the rules which are very formed with us, uh, how much we cannot feel. Mm. It's. Um, I think it's very much influenced by, by um, uh, rules or regulations of institutions, which I have been collecting, and also together with Dominic, we have been building this archive of rules of institutions of different kind, like a post office, uh, yeah, which is uh, actually presented here on the wall, or except for, from it, which is related to some of the items which are here, and then yeah, school building, prisons, hospitals, and all kinds of institutions, which all have like very specific, well, not only communication language within. within Functioning within the, within the walls, but but uh, yeah, also really very often quite a, a extensive list of, of rules that very often people do not obey or follow anymore, but they are still present in these, especially in these written forms. Mm. The, uh, so uh, I, I would say the language uh, you were saying in a very flattering way that it actually sounds like. Uh, well, most absolute, but also authentic in the, in, mm. the, in, the, in the style. So I guess it's very much influenced by the by the by the reading of, of these mm. things, which which actually occup occupied me and also Dominic for quite a while. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a, basically an inter interview or, or communication through letters between these two people. Um, you, you are not really able to identify who who they are exactly if it's the owner of the park or some some um, some authority uh, representing the I don't know city council or someone or, or some really strange uh, I don't know private company or, or some dealer or someone and the um, initial D and E but it's almost like a stand-in for X and Y in another way yeah that's that's yeah. true yeah yeah and then then uh, it's not really a kind of a continuous dialogue or something but uh, there, there are these gaps that uh, the, in some cases, the the, um, uh, the one person doesn't really react to to uh, the previous letter, but there is this miscommunication happening. Either it can be understood in the way that the letter got lost, or or uh, simply there is this yeah Kafka, uh, Kafkaesque um, uh, situation that uh, each of the people uh, are communicating, but without without uh, the attempt to understand to the other. So they basically mm -hmm. just write their um, their letters with many questions and and proposals, but they are not actually reading the, the answers at all. Or and it's the sincerity of this communication that's very striking because, in fact, a body is trying to transport a park from one place to another, find a new home for a park, which mm. in many ways sounds like a great idea <laughs> until you start to realize that by transporting the park, they mean the whole park, the land, <laughs> the stones, the birds, the rain puddle, <laughs> every element of it. And the way that this um, begins to uh, unravel in your mind and make you realize the, the absurdity of it, but in such a realistic way. Mm -hmm. it's, in a, well, it's an incredibly engaging story <laughs> as well. Maybe uh, the, about the park environment, what we like about it very much also, both of us, I think, uh, is that it's actually a very, I mean, it's pretending to be a nature, which is placed within a city um, um, uh, structure, but at the same time it's a very staged environment, very, very fake one, so that's actually mm -hmm. we integrated also yeah, the, the, the fake uh, fountain uh, uh, device which is which is functioning here in the gallery and that's why we are uh, showing here not only the real segments of the park which are wrapped, but also some some things which can be used as, maybe then we can talk about them more, uh, a kind of base for hills or some mm -hmm. curves or, or basically creating the landscape of the mm -hmm. park, but in a very staged, uh, almost like prop-like uh, mm. aesthetic that you, you would just use them, put them somewhere and then cover them with some real material to pretend that mm. the landscape is actually real. But, uh, yeah, in fact, in, gal in the gallery we are um, in, um, in um, not usual situation, is, is, uh, I don't know, in 
Um, but uh, if, if you bring some parts of the park uh, to in, you can, uh, you can uh, see more precisely how much fake, uh, how much faker the things are in Asia. Because now we, for, for us, it's, it's absolutely okay if we are in the city and we see the park and park. Mm -hmm how the park is formed and tree and everything looks like nature. Mm. But in fact, it's, uh, it's really fake of uh, normal nature out of the town. Mm. If we uh, fragmented these things and, and bring it to the interior space, which gallery are, <laughs> it, it's much more visible the absurd how much fake are still the fontaine is or, or and bottle is and, and it's uh, absolutely and particularly in the way that you've made these uh, landscape structures and that to be functional they would probably need to be made of concrete or something mm. extremely durable it is not. <laughs> <laughs> we both know that's plaster <laughs> and it's very obviously plaster to people who come in so it's clearly a very vulnerable untreated <laughs> fine art material or building material mm. so it's like you're housing that contradiction one thing I wanted to mention, though, is that at the end of the story, or the, or the letters, in which this um, dialogue and negotiation is taking place about the movement and cost of movement and forms of transportation and the post or the courier or how to package and the mm -hmm. details around this, at the end it, you, you come to the realisation that the party who is going to be taking the park is unable to anymore. I think due to the weather, right? Because we've, we've gone to the hibernation period of winter and <laughs> the plants would die if you tried to transport them mm. during this time. So the last communication is that, unfortunately, we're going to have to put this whole thing on hold mm. until next year. So when you enter the space of the gallery and you start to, this story starts to be woven around you and you come to these things, you start to think, well, what is this then? What is this place? This is not the final park. This mm -hmm. is not the solution. This is not the postal office, and it's not really the storage. Mm. And we're discussing that it's some sort of limbo. It's some it's kind of in between the park, mm -hmm. the resolution, the postal, some kind of in, in between an institutional um, place. Mm. Yeah, I think it's definitely <laughs> yeah the, the the right way to put it. That for us, uh, the uh, it's not about creating some well. The, coherent or, 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 or final, well, it, it is final because it's, yeah, it, it was open to the public, it's exhibited here and it has, each object has its specific place, but we are rather, uh, rather seeing the space and all the items in it as a kind of uh, situation in which all the objects are actually in a waiting stage or in a kind of pause where, uh, yeah, that is not really clear if they are going to be, uh, as you said, transported somewhere or if they are already stored here forever or or they will be forgotten, just left here sleeping, uh, or, or what's actually there, they, or they will be maybe recreated into something else, like reused or, or, or something. I mean, the room is further <coughs> staged, Dominic, in this like large, abusive gestures that you've made to our beautiful white walls. <laughs> but it's, the, it's, my, it's my most favorite treatment of a gallery space, mm. when the whole environment is, is staged as something. And so for you, the... Um, adaptation or mm -hmm. movement or alteration of the institutional form that's already there. In this case, the lights have been pulled out of our ceiling mm -hmm. and moved around. This is something that we see happening in your practice. Yeah, it was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I uh, uh, it's not easy to say <laughs> again. Um, uh, yeah, the, the gallery is, uh, have some final uh, form for, the, for us, for artists, for, for uh, visitors, and it's, um, of course, um, I don't know if I can say it. Uh, your answer is really full of, uh, <laughs> your question is full of answer, and uh, yeah. it's much more nicer <laughs> than, than, than my... Uh, well, I think what I understand from yeah. the gestures that you make is that by uh, altering an mm -hmm. aspect or key function of an institution, mm -hmm as perhaps in other examples that we've been discussing when specific rooms within an institution were asked to change their purpose yeah. and mm -hmm. their use. And say a, a coffee room was asked mm -hmm. to be the photocopier room mm -hmm. and the photocopier room was the gallery, and the, you know, mm -hmm. for example. By making these alterations, you draw attention to the apparatus mm -hmm. of the institution. And in a way, that becomes also one of the many subjects in the artwork. And I find this a very liberating idea because it 
Mm. It destabilizes the authority of the institution, and where does that destabilization go? It goes to the audience, the mm. visitor. They become more empowered, more enabled with their own autonomy in visiting contemporary art exhibitions all over the world. They're in control of their situation. The institution is just another structure mm. that has its voice, it has its politic. Mm. Yep. And maybe there are some, some works which really are quite related, which Dominic did in the past, that, that, that maybe you, you could mention that, that there was this, this project when he was basically moving, uh, yeah, as you said, you were maybe referring to this project where he basically moved, uh, he worked in a, a quite um, a large uh, um, institution with, with, with uh, several rooms in it, and then he would move each, each room to the other one, so basically it, it, each of them would uh, change its function completely, and then you would see the the, the, uh, the absurdity about like how you would try to fit, the, for example, the cloak room into a big hall, and then suddenly the exhibition space would be limited to, the, to the, I don't know two meters by two meters, I don't know yes. a closet or something. So it was a really obscure situation. But then, of course, it would change completely the whole structure of of, of the space. While here, maybe I, I think maybe we are not that radical here <laughs> in, in this sense, but it's really more about yeah when we are talking about the temporality of, of the things and in actually the, the kind of yeah the, the strange stage in which uh, they are at the moment, which is uh, I, I can't really describe it in, in the words, but it's really this uh, non stability or, or, or non clear mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, status of them that, that uh, maybe one place to refer to would be also which maybe we both like is is this like lost and found uh, places. <laughs> Where right. also objects are objects which yeah quite visible use and and um, traces that yeah of the previous owners are on them, but then they are just again waiting to either yeah to be delivered back back to the original owner or or to be sold maybe to someone. So I guess it also maybe has this kind of not not hopefully too nostalgic character, but but uh, yeah this yeah this kind of yeah, waiting uh, uh, waiting aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, to, that something has to happen with it, like this, this, this kind of yeah, uh, not not um, uh, decided character. Or one other uh, idea around this transformation is that the decay and decomposition of leaves and material is going to continue. The plaster of your sculptures mm -hmm. is going to continue to dry, mm -hmm. to dry out. Uh, it's, it's the bubbling of the water box is going to continue. The puddle will evaporate. Um, it's like an exhibition that's sort of still growing or decomposing or changing its state. And then at the end, in part, will be returned to where it came from. Mm -hmm. Sort of the life cycle of the work itself, materially, I think is quite interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I'm, uh, I think in my case it doesn't happen that often. I usually have the, the opposite, uh, well, maybe no, not a problem, but that I store really heavy uh, devices and installation pieces. In, in Dominic's case, maybe because he is building all these like really ambitious large-scale installations, which then, of course, are taken into pieces and very rarely they can be stored. So there are these temporary architectural constellations changing some spaces quite uh, radically. So I think he's used to this temporarity quite uh, like, yeah, much more yeah, often than I am. Yeah, usually, uh, it's my usual practice. Uh, and on the end of the exhibition, sometimes uh, the gallerist told me, oh, it's a pity that uh, we must uh, put her to the trash. But for me, it's, uh, it's a part of the life, and, and thanks to the end, it's uh, art. I also like about it is that really it's a kind of temporary encounter of the objects, which then yeah will kind of yeah disperse or they will they will go separate ways, and some of them will still continue their lives in some other places, and some of them will just yeah um, uh, yeah continue their their decay in some yeah I don't know uh, hills of garbage somewhere or, or the entropy will set in yeah <laughs> exactly. I, th I suppose one other thing I think it's quite interesting to discuss. I mean, you both have very different practices. And uh, so the first time you've collaborated together, and clearly you're both very respectful of each other's work and how you work. <laughs> so what's quite interesting to know about is um, how you collaborate, how those conversations take place. And, uh, yeah, you see, I start to feel a little bit uncomfortable <laughs> about this topic. But we agreed it would be I, a success I if you took the same plane home. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, uh, it was going like on on butter. In Czech, we thought it's going on butter. It's in English. I'm not too. sure if in English um, it sounds that well, but like, like very well. It's uh, very well. The butter is <laughs> as smooth as butter. Yeah, it's uh, going like on butter. It's Czech. Um, 
terminus technicus. Uh, and in, in uh, Rio it was saying, but uh, what you speaking, uh, what you thought uh, before, we are from really different uh, practices. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'm too precisely in, in some object details for Eva, and Eva is. Um, it's um, too, too, too clever uh, <laughs> on me and, and some, in some details uh, too, too uh, surrealistic. Uh, uh, but it was uh, nice and, and thanks it, I can see me much more better when I am too stupid <laughs> on, on some detail and where, where, where which, which uh, focus, bigger focus I can see. If I cannot think like Eva and uh, I have open hair thinking for for my ideas, which uh, and I don't know how much complex is end of the result, but we really found it the topic and content together, which is coming mostly from our feelings and, and dialogues mm -hmm. uh, through separately object, but of course more uh, from the general idea, which uh, which is interesting from us, uh, from both of us, very much, but. Uh, maybe from different uh, angle. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I mean, yeah, I, like for for me personally, uh, yeah, yeah, I can't talk for for Dominic, but for me it was actually quite 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 fruitful. I was just now thinking about the situations like when a when when a movie is done and then all the actors and the director are talking about how how the collaboration was and then <laughs> they always they, they actually never complain. It's always this like pret pretending it was a kind of yeah yeah absolutely fantastic collaboration <laughs> and. and uh, but but I really have to say that, for, uh, of course, we were facing many obstacles at the very beginning. We, we maybe had like too many different ideas, and then the the kind of uh, yeah, uh, trying to agree on something and really develop the, the one project we would, we would really like to realize took some time, uh, actually quite lo long in, in this case. But then the realization was. Uh, Quite fascinating to me, also in the sense that if I would work alone, I would, I would, uh, of course, I, I would struggle as well. I would doubt how to make things, but at the same time, I wouldn't have this uh, reflection of. Uh, the, there were there was also many discussions about each object. What what is the potential of, of the thing, mm. about the material, about the yeah, the the, the 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 final form and everything. And I think somehow this was really because I never collaborated before. Dominic had some collaboration collaborations with some other artists before, but for me it was the really very first time. So I'm sorry, it's your first and first yeah. uh, in, in, in a long time. No, no, no. no. So, so I'm, I'm really positive. <coughs> Let's see about the flight tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, from, from my perspective, it's been such a privilege to witness that, 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 that difficult, uh, you can see the difficulty in making these decisions and, and coming to the resolutions. And it's been such a privilege to see you come through it with what I can only describe as a third practice. It's mm. not a two person show. And it's not either of you discreetly. It's really something else. And I think that this is, a, this is what's so exciting. That's, that's also where the complexity comes from. Mm. Because whilst we have the, the scene, which is really complex in itself, then we have also little small elements of Eva Kochikova and Dominic Lang that are kind of sh shoots the project off in a different direction as well, further to what we have here. <laughs>